I'd like to call to order the meeting of the City Planning Commission. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is the public input guidance, uh, guidelines, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to open the floor for public comments with the following guidelines. Number one, please limit the comments or suggestions to three minutes or less because we do have a full agenda. Comments and suggestions will pertain to the agenda item under discussion. Personal criticism of other individuals is out of order. The names of those attending who checked on the attendance clipboard that they wanted to, wanted to provide public input at this meeting will be called first. After that, group, after that group, the chair will ask anyone else who would like to provide input. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand to be recognized. After being recognized, please come to the podium State your name, address for the record. The plan commission will listen to the citizens' input, but we will not respond or debate. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that support. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is item 2.1, which is an approval of the Planning Commission meetings, uh, minutes from February 10th. Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 2.2 is a conditional use and variance application by Wells Fargo to install a new monument sign at 1251 Wilson Avenue. Turn it over to City Planner Steve Sokolowski. All right, um, Roger Osterman is here from RLO who's representing Wells Fargo. Um, we're taking a look at the bank at 1251 Wilson Avenue. What Wells, Wells Fargo is updating their logos nationwide so they're coming in to update their signage. Um, the bank is proposing to remove the existing pylon sign and replace it with a new monument sign. So thank you, Roger. We appreciate that. Um, the existing pylon sign is 23 feet high and 140 square feet. And the new monument side is proposed to be 48 square feet and 8 feet high. Um, it's double-sided illuminated monument sign advertising Wells Fargo. In addition to this sign, there's several wall signs and directional signs that they'll be um, changing out as well at the site. Applicant is requesting one variance, and that's to install a monument sign with a 5.8-foot setback. Typically, the setback to the, is 12 feet to the property line. Um, staff, uh, in order to properly advertise, the applicant is proposing to locate the monument sign in the front yard along Wilson Avenue, so traffic heading east and west on Wilson can easily identify Wells Fargo. So staff is recommending approval of the proposed sign and variant subject to the following condition that they obtain the necessary sign permits. The lighting meets our requirements. The sign shall meet the minimum 5.8-foot uh, setback. The sign must be located on the applicant's property, and the maximum height is 8 feet high. So I can answer any questions in the applicants here. Thank you. Roger, would you like to add anything to that presentation? Oh, no, basically we felt you would be happy with the fact that we were changing it to a monument sign, from a pylon sign, which fits with the other signage in the area. And it's uh, basically, like Steve said, it's an image upgrade for Wells Fargo that they're doing across the country. Thank you very much. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak on this issue? Just hold your hand up. Seeing uh, there, there is no one, we'd return the discussion to the commissioners. Commissioners, do you have any questions? None, I'd entertain a motion. Go ahead, Alderman Bellinger. Uh, I would make a motion to approve uh, with the staff recommendations as cited by Steve. I'll second it. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Vote, chair votes aye, motion passes. Um, item 2.3 will be held uh, till a future meeting. Yep. Okay. 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 Um, 2.4 is a conditional use permit and variance application by Sheboygan School District to install a new monument sign with an electronic message center at Jefferson School located at 1538 North 15th Street. Steve, can you start? All right. Um, 
Roger Osterman is here from RLO and representing the school district. Um, taking a look at a sign at Jefferson School, it's a manual reader board. Um, the school is proposing to replace the existing manual with a new electronic message center. Sign's approximately 40 square feet, seven feet tall. Um, the new sign would replace the old sign and allow for the ability to post a number of announcements for upcoming events, activities. There are a couple of variances in this matter. There's uh, requesting a 40 square foot monument sign. Um, and the applicant is requesting to install the monument sign with a 6.3 six foot setback from the property line. Basically what they're doing is it's an existing manual reader board. They want to take the manual reader board off, use the existing base, and install the electronic message center. So staff was recommending approval of that proposed sign permit and variant subject to the following conditions that they obtain the necessary sign permits. Lighting meets our uh, zoning ordinance requirements. Minimum meets the minimum setback of 6.3 feet from the uh, prop, or from the sidewalk. Applicant shall meet all vision triangle requirements and the maximum height of the sign is eight feet tall. So again, I can answer any questions in the applicant's staff. Thank you, Steve. Roger, would you like to add anything on this one? Uh, pretty much, it's just the, uh, uh, using the existing sign and structure, like Steve said, and uh, installing electronic message center, which gives them an opportunity to to change their messages more often rather than having a static message, which most of the schools have gone to with the amount of information that they like to get out to their students and parents and things like that. So. Thank you. Is there anyone in the gallery who'd like to speak on this item? Please raise your hand. Okay, commissioners, any questions? Marilyn? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Roger, you've certainly come through every time with all the needs that, w that are requested of you, and it keeps you busy in your Sheboygan business. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry? S Steve, is there a preference on the sign color, uh, the color of the letters? I noticed we have multiple colors on this um, Is that normal? Not, there was nothing from staff requiring any specifics on the colors. I don't know if um, Mr. Yeah, Hassler I think it looks might better. speak to that. I just want to make sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's, what's happening now is uh, product cost-wise, the multicolors are now coming down in cost rather than just the static red. So a lot of people are taking advantage of that. So. Okay. Yes, Steve. Our, our, the biggest concern we would have just is at that kitty corner, that sign is kind of facing some residences. So it's just important from a flashing and lighting perspective to make sure that's not impacting the neighbors. Yeah. And like always, we only sell products that are self-dimming and that's so what makes you're not overpowering and things like that and can be calibrated lower if there is any concern. Good. Okay. Any other discussion? And otherwise, I'd entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve with staff recommendations. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Good luck with your meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Contact me. Okay, thank you. Your chat did rather. Applicants need to. You're not, not going to stick around, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got enough people. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we'll go to item 2.5 a conditional use permit time extension request for the Lakeshore Community Health Care to operate from 1714 Cambridge Avenue. Turn it over to Steve. All right. Um, Kristen Blanchard is here from uh, Sheboygan Area Community Clinics and Lakeshore Community Health Clinic and uh, Kurt Davis from Abacus Architects. Uh, Plan Commission in February of 14th had approved a conditional use permit and variance application by uh, Lakeshore Community Health Clinic to use the former uh, American Orthodontics facility at 1714 Cambridge Avenue for uh, a health clinic purposes. Um, the applicants are here today because basically a conditional use permit is uh, permitted for one year until it becomes null and void and basically an applicant needs to uh, pull a building permit by that time. Uh, the applicants are, haven't had the opportunity to purchase the property yet and haven't had the opportunity to uh, pull that building permit, but there is a provision that allows them the ability to come to the plan commission and ask for an extension to that conditional use permit. So that's what the uh, Lakeshore Health uh, LCHC is here for today. Um, basically, they're stating in late October of 14, there was a purchase and offer agreement that expired. 
and um, right now they're uh, in the process of closing on financing, hopefully sooner than later. It sounded like it might be approximately uh, a 90 day time frame. Um, prior to putting the staff recommendations together, um, there was a deadline date of May 1st, 2015 with regards to having conversations with the applicants with regards to financing they've informed us that their financing may take approximately 90 days and uh, a couple of the conditions are is that they would take ownership and pull a building permit so staff is going to change the may 1st 2015 deadline to a june 26 2015 deadline and that was going to be with the conditions that one, they provide the documentation that they're the actual owners of the property and that uh, Sheboygan Area Community Clinics uh, obtains a building permit by that June 26 date. So staff was recommending approval with those conditions of extending their permit and the applicants are here and I can answer any questions on that. Thank you, Steve. If you'd like to add anything to that, just make sure you grab the mic in front of you and speak into that little thing with the little ball on it there you go Here's a little clip there you go the floor is yours wonderful thank you very much and it's uh, I just want to say thank you to Steve for working with us on this extension and uh, we do have an approved offer and hopefully we'll be moving forward sooner than later so thank you were there any questions by the commissioners is there anyone in the uh, gallery who'd like to speak on this item? Seeing none. Commissioners, I'd entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve with staff recommendations. I'll second it. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, one last call for any discussion. Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. You. Congrats. Thanks, guys. If our next applicants could make their way to the front here. Item 2.6 is General Ordinance 46 of 1415, a report of officer 243 of 1415, amending the zoning change to the use district classification and the property located at 3306 Salmon Avenue from SR5 Suburban Residential to Class SO Suburban Office Classification. I'll turn it over to Steve. All right. All right, tonight the plan commission is reviewing a rezoning request from the Sheboygan Area School District. Basically, Aurora Healthcare has uh, been authorized to make a rezone application on the Field of Dreams property located at 3306 Salmon Avenue from suburban residential to suburban offense. The applicant indicates that the rezone is proposed because it's Aurora Health Clinic's intent to purchase the Field of Dreams property from the Sheboygan Area School District in order to construct a new medical and office facilities from this property. Aurora Healthcare's Sheboygan Memorial Hospital and clinic facilities have been operating at capacity for a number of years. Aurora Healthcare has been searching for a site within the city of Sheboygan to construct an outpatient surgery center and medical office building that would better address patient demand and free up capacity at their existing facilities. Based on the space and amenity needs, the Sheboygan Area School District Field of Dreams property presents their uh, only viable option. The proposed rezoning of this parcel to the suburban office will allow Aurora Healthcare the opportunity to provide better access to health services for the people of the city of Sheboygan and the residents in the surrounding communities of Sheboygan County. Aurora believes that the proposed outpatient surgery center and medical office facilities are consistent with the healthcare related development in this area. The overall plan project plan maintains a significant amount of publicly accessible green space by upgrading the replacement athletic fields on the lands directly to the east of the site and on the Butson property on the south side of the city. The intent is to relocate several fields from the Field of Dreams to the school property on the east side of Taylor. The relocated facilities will include two new upgraded baseball fields, two new upgraded soccer fields, and will maintain a significant amount of accessible green space for the neighborhood. The Boots and property will be developed as a 54-acre youth sports complex. Uh, Roosevelt Park will receive some additional upgrades to the baseball field, and Optimus Park will now be home to the relocated uh, community gardens. Aurora Healthcare is proposing an investment of $86.4 million in the city of Sheboygan, including contributing $5 million toward the development of new recreational facilities. 
Aurora states the new facilities will likely generate approximately $200,000 in annual taxes. The proposed outpatient surgery center and medical office facilities will uh, add highly skilled jobs to the community. Um, the new Aurora Health facilities, new athletic facilities, and the improvements to the park facilities all have proposed site improvements that will be attractive additions to the area that will provide benefits for the neighborhood and the city of Sheboygan for years to come. A couple of points to point out to the plan commission is important for the plan commission to understand that proposing the property that to understand if the property zoning designation is changed from SR5, SR5, suburban residential five to suburban office, an applicant could submit an application to use the property for any use that's permitted or conditionally permitted in the SO zone, such as an outpatient surgery center and medical office facility. If the common council approves the rezone, then the applicant needs to be aware that the conditional use will need to be submitted to and reviewed by the city of Sheboygan Plan Commission prior to constructing and operating any outpatient surgery center and medical office from the site. Um, there's been a couple of questions that have been posed by the public and a number of questions I'm sure Plan Commission members and maybe aldermen have received. Um, a couple of things to understand is that the property is zoned as suburban residential five is a single family zone. However, in that single family zone, just like all of our residential zones, there is the ability for someone to apply for a conditional use permit to operate a school, a church, a hospital. So as the property is zoned right now, there could be an application, a conditional use permit submitted for those types of uses. Because Aurora is doing an outpatient medical surgery center and offices, that they, those uses are not allowed in the SR5 zone, and that's why we are here today, is to allow an applicant to propose rezoning those properties for those purposes. Another question that's been out in the public, or out that I've received is, how is there an ability for an, someone to uh, propose rezoning or submitting an application when they do not own the property? Um, this happens often with a purchase and sales agreement. Oftentimes the buyer of the property puts in a contingency that indicates that we only want to buy the property provided we have the ability to do with it what we want. So in this particular case, what the uh, city allows for is an applicant to submit an application provided they have the authorization from the property owner to submit that application. And the Sheboygan Area School District has provided that letter allowing this application to be submitted. So just a couple, I don't know if there's any other specific questions, but that's the recommend, or just the staff report at this time. Thank you very much, Steve. Next, we'll go on and ask the applicant if they'd like to make a, a presentation. David? Sure, um, yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I think maybe just so you have a sense of what our plans uh, entail and the services that we're providing uh, in the building and what our plans are for the existing facility. Um, the goal here with the outpatient uh, surgery center and medical office building is to uh, really deal with our constrained facilities, both at the hospital and the clinic. Um, we, uh, our plan is to move 70% of our outpatient services uh, in the GI and the surgery area to this new location, um, as well as moving 18 physicians from the Sheboygan uh, Clinic to this location. And then our intent with that is to be able to create breathing room both at our hospital facility and our clinic facility to be able to expand uh, to continue to meet the community needs. Um, half of this uh, um, services are hospital based so they the surgery center will be hospital uh, based in its services as a as an extension of the hospital uh, and the medical uh, group uh, component with the medical office building uh, will be part of the um, the clinic and so that's the tax um, indication that you described i think what i'll do is i'll pass it on to um, to jim kleinfeld jim is our developer uh, with bolt uh, construction and and uh, talk through the project Okay, uh, I'll work off of the site plan that's up on the screen. Uh, effectively, what we have here is uh, two buildings that are connected. Um, on the left, uh, you have the outpatient facility, um, which is a, a one-story structure. Um, 
It's uh, 18 <coughs> feet in height, uh, although there is uh, much of it has a, a screened penthouse, uh, bringing the total height to 32 feet. Uh, the medical office building, which is on the right, is a two-story structure, uh, and it's uh, 35 feet in height. Um, if you uh, look at the site plan, you'll see uh, we do have three parking lots. Uh, they total 589 parking spaces. 180 of these spaces are dedicated to uh, physicians and staff. Um, the, that is the parking lot that is along Geely. Um, in response to uh, some of the concerns that we've heard voiced by, uh, by neighbors, uh, we have peeled that parking back a bit uh, away from Geely, and we've actually taken two of the bays away uh, and swung them around over onto Taylor. Um, so the, the remaining two parking lots are for patients and visitors. Um, those are 409 spaces combined. Uh, and as you can see, one is closer to Taylor, and then the other one is closer to the center of the site. Uh, at this point, we are showing three access points to the site. The main access point will be off of Taylor Drive, uh, and it will line up with the relocated Field of Dreams uh, point. Um, we also have off of Geely, we have an entrance for uh, staff, physicians, uh, and also uh, services and deliveries. Uh, and then off of Salmon, we uh, also have an entrance um, intended to be uh, for patients. Um, we're, at this point, we're showing this entrance, uh, although um, we do not yet have the, the final results of our traffic study. If the traffic study does not require that entrance, um, we could eliminate it. Uh, the site plan also shows you uh, walking paths that we intend to create throughout the site um, to try to maintain uh, a lot of the character uh, of the current location. Uh, and it gives you uh, kind of a, a representative feel for what the landscaping uh, of the site will look like. We have not yet developed detailed landscaping plans, but this is intended to, to give you a, a feel for the, uh, the, uh, the intent. Uh, you can see over on the right-hand side are the, uh, uh, the field of dreams, uh, the two baseball fields and the two soccer fields. It's actually not part of the zoning map amendment uh, process, but we're showing it here nonetheless. Uh, if we could flip to the next slide, the, uh, the fact sheet. Maybe a little bit difficult to read, but uh, this is a, a summary uh, of the facility. Uh, it simply addresses the, the two different buildings. Um, the, uh, the outpatient facility, which is 53,000 square feet, and the medical office building, which is 77,000 square feet. Uh, it ad also addresses the use of the facility, uh, which is uh, uh, outpatient services, as Dave mentioned. Um, uh, we point out the hours of operation. Uh, the outpatient surgery and the colon center uh, are open from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. for staff and patients. Uh, the orthopedic center and medical office building uh, open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, rehab is open from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, and at this point, we do not anticipate any weekend hours. Um, the fact sheet also addresses the parking, which I described uh, previously, uh, the access points, uh, in a moment, uh, Randy Beckwith from HGA will describe the lighting plan. Um, the, uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, we've got uh, some bullet points on here with regard to traffic. Uh, we, we're kind of hesitant to talk a lot about traffic since our traffic study has not yet been completed, um, but we know there have been a, you know, a fair amount of questions uh, from the public. So we will share that. Uh, at this point, the early indications of the traffic study show that morning rush hour traffic will increase between 11 and 13 percent. Afternoon rush hour traffic will increase uh, approximately between 17 and 20 percent. Uh, Non-rush hours uh, will show much less of an increase. Uh, in addition, uh, with regard to emergency vehicles, uh, no emergency patients will be brought to the facility. Uh, and we expect the need to transport patients from the facility emergently uh, of only three to four times per year. Uh, and that summarizes the fact sheet. I'll uh, ask Randy Beckwith from HGA 
uh, to speak for a moment. Uh, Randy will talk a little bit about the exterior design uh, as well as uh, a little bit about the lighting. Okay. My name is Randy Beckwith with HGA, um, Architects and Engineers. Um, first, um, we, we're going to be showing an image here. We are in early stages of design, uh, but this, this image shows uh, Aurora's current standards for material and form. Uh, brick, stone, and metal panel that we've uh, recently used on another project, which you'll see here later as well. Th this is a, a view from Taylor so that you can understand the, the building being set back, the opportunity to provide landscape, uh, some, some ponds. And then this is a this is a very diagrammatic, somewhat technical drawing or uh, image here. We're we're showing existing um, lighting conditions along the bordering streets, the type of light fixtures that occur. Um, we're showing a proposed fixture on the bottom right, which represents a, a standard type of light fixture that Aurora uses. And then this very diagrammatic plan on the on the bottom left um, indicates. As you can tell, the parking lots that we saw earlier, um, the light levels that will occur, um, and the, the the main point here is that the light levels within this development will be less than the light levels that occur on the street. And then the the other project that I referred to uh, a few a few moments ago was the is this project uh, that we're working on in in Burlington, Wisconsin, with Aurora, and you can see. Uh, similar materials that we had shown in the previous image. Is there anything else in your presentation right now? <clears throat> okay, thank no, you very it. much. We had a motion earlier to for public comments, so I'll just remind you that we're keeping the comments to three minutes each. And at this time, uh, Chad will call up the people that have signed up. If we can ask that the first if we can ask the first person to come to the podium and the runners up, if you will, the next in line to sit on the two seats. Sorry, you two are going to have to move. Um, the two seats that are next to it to keep this on track. And our first uh, person signed up is Jane Martin. Mary Lynn, there's a seat over here. Yeah. And the next person would be Scott Lewandowski. name and your home address please my name is Jane Martin and my home address is 2326 West Shelley Court and you will have three minutes pardon you will have three minutes no problem so I'm here to support the Aurora proposal for the planned Aurora outpatient center and office building I'm speaking both as an employee of Aurora as well as a neighbor of the field of dreams um, as a neighbor, I've lived in my home for 38 years. I've worked for Aurora for greater than 40 years, and I've seen many changes in both places. When Mike and I built our home, Taylor Drive was a gravel road. It's now a very busy street. Um, the Field of Dreams was a cornfield or farmer's field. When I began working for Aurora, things have changed since then as well. We're now into the NICU business. We're into palliative care. So many things are changing, and I just see this whole proposal as progress, a very positive move forward. And my main message to the people here is that there are neighbors in the area that are very much in favor of this proposal. Some are not quite as uh, outspoken as some of the people who are against it. And we just wanted to make sure that you realize that there were people there who are very much in favor of it. We also want to point out that Aurora has taken many steps to try to look at things that will help the area, the neighbors, and friends of the Field of Dreams um, be happier with the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Scott Lewandowski, and the next one up is Mike Hyatt. And can I have your name and address, please? Scott Levendusky, 2201 Erie Avenue. 
And you'll have three minutes. Okay. The Sheboygan Area School District and Aurora have a plan to destroy the field of dreams. Both say that it will be a win-win for the taxpayers. Here is what some of the win-win for the taxpayers will be. My concern is for the taxpayers of Sheboygan. Aurora, according to the Sheboygan Press of February 11th, will donate $2.3 million of the $3.1 million cost just to move the existing field. According to Don Alderman Don Hammond, the city would have to come up with $800,000 above what Aurora gives. But how much will it really cost the taxpayers of Sheboygan to tear down the Boston store and get rid of lead and asbestos? Alderman Hammond's estimate was about $150,000 under the actual cost. This is just to move the existing field, not everything else. At Thursday's meeting at Cooper School, it was said that stop and go lights would need to be put up at either Taylor Drive and Salmon or Taylor Drive and Geely or maybe both. Also, it said maybe a roundabout would be needed. Neither the Sheboygan Area School District or Aurora would be paying, so again, that would be city taxpayers paying. On the west side of the current field of dreams, Aurora has an access road planned. The road in that area would need to be widened, again, probably with the cost paid by the city taxpayers. On the south end of the east field, where they want to move the field of dreams, there is contaminated soil from the city dumping snow there for years. Neither Aurora or the Sheboygan School District has said anything about paying to clean up the soil. So again, it looks like it would be city taxpayers paying. On the south side, to get to the Butson site, there is no sidewalk. So the city would have to build about a half mile long sidewalk from Washington Avenue to the property. Again, probably the city taxpayers would be paying for the cost of the sidewalk. Finally, for the last year available in 2008, Memorial Hospital at 2629 North 7th Street paid $851.26 in property taxes. So the city taxpayers will be paying about $2 million total to give Aurora a multi-billion dollar business what they want while getting very little tax money in return. My final question for the people of Sheboygan would be, would you prefer to spend $2 million of your tax dollars on a new building for a multi-billion dollar company or to fix our city streets? Thank you. Next up, we have Mike Height, and the next person is Adam Brill. Mike, can I have your name and home address, please? Mike Height, H-E-I-D-T, home address, N6583, Meadowbrook Lane, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Thank you, and you'll have three minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, would like to talk to the city council uh, about keeping the momentum that's in Sheboygan County right now. Uh, 2014... Sheboygan County finished with an unemployment rate of 3.9%. It's the best in the state of Wisconsin. <clears throat> there are 1,200 open vacancies in the county right now. This is an opportunity for us to invest in the infrastructure of our county, of our city. I have been uh, the director of our rehab services at Aurora for the last six years. I've brought over 50 people into the community uh, that are high, highly skilled uh, people. These are people with master's and doctorate level degrees, and they are looking to live the rest of their lives in Sheboygan County. Right now, we lack resources for our youth. Investing in athletic facilities are significant draws that will help retain the talent pool in this community. I think this is an outstanding opportunity, not just as an Aurora employee, but as a citizen of the Sheboygan County. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Adam Brill and then Pam Ott. Adam, can you give me your... I'm oh, sorry, go on. The, can you give me your name and home address, please? Adam Brill, 819 Indiana Avenue, Oostburg, you... Wisconsin. Okay, and you will have three minutes, sir. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank you all for this opportunity to be able to talk, um, open and transparent. I am an, an employee of Aurora. Uh, I oversee and supervise our sports medicine department, as well as our outpatient rehabilitation center at Memorial Hospital. I've had the pleasure of, as Mike had mentioned, working under him, um, being able to advance our rehab services. The amount of growth that we've seen in our department over the five years that I've been here has been exponential in bringing in, again, high-level talent, as well as treating the patients of this area. Um, about 60% of our patients that we see just rehab specific are within the city. When we're looking at physical therapy, occupational therapy, sports medicine, 
services, a lot of times we're looking at mobility issues. We're looking at people that have a hard time moving, hard time getting from one place to another. Keeping this facility in the city of Sheboygan is crucial in allowing these patients to get the proper care that they need. Majority of our patients that we see also take the city bus transportation system, another service that is vital in being able to allow these patients to be able to get the proper care that they need. On top of the duties that I oversee at the hospital, also in charge <laughs> of overlooking uh, outreach athletic training coverage to not just uh, organizations within the city, but also out to the community. My background is as an athletic trainer, um, expert in the injury prevention, rehabilitation, as well as evaluation. So looking at the current facilities that the youth have in this area is, from my mind, not a good way to prevent injury. The proposal that we're putting out there with the money that we're able to fund, we're going to see not only an increase in youth activity, but we're also going to see a decrease in those injuries of the, of the younger population. And we know, especially at that early age, if we can prevent things early on, the better and more success we're going to have for those people to not only play athletic careers when they get to high school, but live an active and healthy lifestyle. So I would say to, to those that are the decision makers, to those community members that, that may be on the fence or maybe even opposed to it, I would say it's our job to try to pull you into this project. We're not trying to push this project on any one of you. I would welcome, I would give, I have my card here if you'd like to talk about more of the services that we provide, some of the outreach plans that we have. Currently the site that, we, that we're based out of at Memorial Hospital on the ground floor, we have no green space to do any of the the. the outreach programs that we're looking to do. So yes, from a business standpoint, this is going to help us. But a global reach, working with the different youth organizations, working with, uh, which we've done in the past with the Sheboygan Police Department, we just need the green space to be able to do that. On top of our for own benefit, these brand new sports facilities are going to be something special. And growing up in the community, um, again, I mentioned I'm from Oosburg, growing up in the county and having a lack of that, uh, to be able to provide that for my own kids, which I have four of, and, and others in the community, I'm, I'm definitely excited for. As Mike said, to keep this momentum going, I'm definitely proud to be an, an Aurora employee, and I'm definitely proud to be able to, to have a hand in this project. So I appreciate your time, and have a, have a good day. Thank you. Next up, we have Pam Ott, and then Jim Kleinfeld. Are you, you going to speak? You good? Okay. Pam, could you give me your full name and your home address, please? Yes, my full name is Pam Ott, and I'm at 105 First Street, unit number one in Sheboygan Falls. Okay, and you'll have three minutes. Okay, thank you. I am a leader in, um, for Aurora Sheboygan Memorial Medical Center and also have oversight over the clinics in Sheboygan and Calumet County. But the reason that I'm here to speak to you is I want to speak to you as from the perspective of a parent. Um, but first, before I do that, there are so many reasons that have already been spoken to in the last 20 minutes as why this project is so important. But I also want to add not only to it the potential for future economic development that this project will bring to Sheboygan, but also it is a premier opportunity for the youth in Sheboygan as it relates to athletics. And that's what I would like to speak to. I'm not originally from Sheboygan, but I'm from Verona, Wisconsin, which is a community that's southwest of um, Madison. I grew up in Verona and had the privilege of raising my children there. And during the time I was raising them, actually, let me just back up. One of the things that I believed in in raising my children is I wanted them to be in a community where there was exceptional um, academics and a strong educational system, strong athletics, and strong music. I felt that was really important for them to be well-rounded. My children had that opportunity. Verona has a strong um, educational system, but we were a little weak on the sports. And during the time when my children were growing up in elementary school, I had a son and a daughter. Um, Verona and the community built a hockey rink. They built um, Redden, um, Redden Park. Many of you in soccer may be familiar with that particular sports complex. Um, a little league um, sports complex that includes three baseball diamonds and a, a softball field. Two high school softball fields, which coincidentally were also called the Field of Dreams and also a football and a lacrosse field. Um, the addition of these exceptional athletic facilities has been a contributing factor to the economic growth in Verona. It's also raised the bar as it relates to Verona athletic programs from youth all the way through high school. My children benefited from these new facilities during child, in their childhood years and, for, and will benefit for the rest of their life. And I'd like to see those opportunities for the children here in Sheboygan. Um, I know one of the things my son's hockey, hockey coach once said is, is to get your children off to a good start, you want to make certain that they always have good equipment and good facilities. 
And I tell you, that stuck with me from the very beginning. As I mentioned, I believe every child deserves this opportunity, and I'd like to see this for the children of Sheboygan. Verona has a slogan. It's called Your Hometown USA. And I'd like to see Sheboygan have that with this additional um, investment that, it, that was being proposed to this community. Um, I would like to ask for your support of this important project for the Sheboygan community, and thank you for this time. Thank you. Next up, we have Renee Rush. And following her, I can't read the writing, but I think it's Pauline Laganowski. So if you could come up, too. Renee, can you give me your name and home address, please? It's Renee Roosh, 2301 North 34th Street. And you'll have three minutes. Okay. Thank you. Um, one of the reasons that we're here is I am opposed to the building of or the destroying of the Field of Dreams. Um, one of the reasons that, you know, one of the things that was brought up on the, I guess the other side of it is that there's parking issues over in the Field of Dreams, and I want to make clear that there is no parking issues. There is a 210 parcel parking spots there over the Field of Dreams. During the baseball season, there are no issues with parking on the roads. Everyone uses the parking lot. There's nothing nothing going on there. But during soccer season, people feel the need to not use the parking spaces provided and to park on the road, thus creating or giving the illusion that it's just crazy wild there and it's insane. Um, just use the parking lot and there's never an issue. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, we talked about um, last Thursday about the different acreages, um, acres that we have. Currently, the taxpayers own 111 acres, 54 acres at the Bootson Farm, 35 acres at the Field of Dreams, and 22 acres on the east parcel of land across from the Field of Dreams. It's a simple subtraction. If you take the 35 acres away, we only remain with 76 acres of usable green space. We currently hold and own 111 of those acres. Do you want to see the green space in the city downsized by 35 acres? Just something to think about. Sheboygan has a history of trying to destroy and run over your green space. You know, for example, there's Taylor Drive. Years ago, they wanted to take and pave Tra Taylor Drive through Evergreen Park all the way through Maywood. Thankfully, that was stopped so we could preserve some two great parks that we have. Those are nice outdoor nature preserve parks. They are not the same thing as the Field of Dreams green space. Years ago, we wanted to put the city um, police station on the Sheridan Park area. And people fought hard for that. It wasn't even as utilized as much as the Field of Dreams is now. Thankfully, uh, the city came to their senses and voted that down and decided not to do that. And I'd hope that we would do the same thing this time around. Um, this would be a four times bigger mistake because more people use this facility and this park. It's not just a soccer field. It is, it is a park. It is a green space. It is utilized for many different things. Last Thursday, I asked if the uh, Sheboygan Area School District had approval from the DNR to build on this and to make these transactions happen. And the question or the answer to me was not yet. We're in the process. My question is, why would you consider rezoning? Why would you consider uh, making a decision on this when you don't have all of the approvals necessary. Has the DNR... Excuse me, your time is up. Has the DNR approved it? It has not yet. Thank you. Next up, we have Pauline. Is that... Oh, it's Pat. Okay. It's Patricia. <laughs> Laganowski. I was wondering if I could give my time to Bef Tammy, who wasn't able to sign up. That's fine. We'll open up the floor afterwards. We have to let everybody speak. We just wanted to have a feeling. So if you want to speak, you can speak or or you can pass. Okay, then I guess I'll speak. Oh, I just want to Can we just get your name and your home address, please? Pat Laganowski, 2225 North 35th Street. Okay, and you'll have three minutes. Okay. I went around collecting signatures and, and just questioning neighbors around the neighborhood. There were, out of all of them that I went to, um, I would say only three, four of them that didn't want to sign, and that was because they were employees of Aurora, and they felt that if their name or address were on 
the petition that there could be some repercussions. So they, they did talk about this, and some of them weren't happy about it. Um, others were unbiased, didn't care one way or the other. But what I do want to state is our, we really want to keep this green space. We're not against Aurora and Sheboygan at all. There are just other places that they could go that would make a little bit more sense than taking the park away and losing those extra acreage. Um, it just doesn't seem right to do that. And then also with your study, your traffic study, um, where your driveway is going to be put, there's a very short street there exactly where I live, and for you to have a driveway right there is going to make that even more complicated. And Geely Avenue currently has got a bunch of big potholes in it that really needs to be fixed in our area because the concrete obviously wasn't good enough when it was put in. So there's a lot of teardown on that street, and if you're going to be putting trucks going in and out of there, it, it's just it's going to deteriorate it so and there's also water plane right in that area too so I do see that you have a pond plan there but I don't feel that that's going to be enough for that and also have you really taken into consideration that we had to have the holding pond put in on 29th Street there at the corner of Geely and 29th Street for the flooding that we've had out there before so it just I do think that that needs to be considered I don't know if you've done that or not and the other thing is from a disaster recovery ex perspective we have two hospitals, the only two in Sheboygan, and I know you don't want to put a, you, you're saying you're not going to put a hospital there, but with the space that you're building and how you talk about campus, you eventually will move that there and build there. If something would happen, come through there, it would destroy both of them at the same time because they're so close. I've been in the disaster recovery aspect of business, and I know that you need to have them so far apart in order to make the government disaster recovery plan pertinent so it's just some things to consider and the other thing is what you've taken away from a lot of the kids that aren't in sports that go use that field to go with their telescope at night and go view the stars or to use their RC radio controlled planes or even when our kids were younger even there's still kids that do it shoot rockets off so they don't end up in somebody's yard it was always big enough to do that without having it in trees or in someone's yard. So those are all things that kids do that aren't sports oriented. And we all know that we are getting the, the boots in farm no matter what. So sports isn't what you consider out of the picture. It's going to be there. It's just that whether you build there or you build at a few other sites in town, you'd still donate, correct? Or is that just a dangle in front of us? Excuse me, Pat. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Christine Larson, and following her is Melissa Rush. I mean, Melissa Broadish, something similar to that. <laughs> Hi, can you give us your name and address, please? Christine Larson. Uh, my address is N7233, County Road T, Glen Beulah. Okay, and you will have three minutes. Thank you. Um, I've been a clinic employee for the last 15 years, first as a nursing supervisor, and now as our Director of Operations. Part of my responsibility is ensuring that we attract and retain physicians in our multi-specialty group. I am at the point in time where we don't have enough space in the Sheboygan Clinic at 2414 Kohler Memorial Drive to hire um, physicians, have their own office, and see the patients that so desperately need care um, with us. And having the ability, as Adam and Mike pointed out, to uh, develop our orthopedic program. We have an aging population in Sheboygan, and my biggest fear as a nurse is not having access for our patients who need it the most. Um, that's really all I have to say. I echo um, support for the project from um, behalf of the county as well. Um, living on the western side of the county, it can be difficult to access care um, in that area, um, but having it off of Taylor Drive is accessible for those of us that drive in from the county. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Melissa Brod Broadish. Brash? Dad, I'd probably ruin your name as well, so that's okay. Okay, we just need your name and address, please, and you, you can Melissa tell Chad how it is. <laughs> All right. Um, Melissa Brush from uh, 3320 Geely Avenue. And you so, only have three minutes. Sorry. Thank you. Um, again, we're not against Aurora building a new facility. We, th we understand that. And... Um, uh, 
we're happy to support that. We, we are fortunate enough to have wonderful facilities. We do have the boots and property now that we can hopefully someday afford to build on. Um, but I wanted to talk to you specifically looking at this from a taxpayer's point of view and from the city of Sheboygan and whether this makes financial sense um, when you have other options, Mr. Grabner. Um, so I started to look at the boots and property in the soccer complex. I hope we can eventually have that right now as taxpayers. I I don't think we can afford to do that. Um, we, I'm wondering if we have bids on this property because if you look at the property and you do a topical map, it's going to take a ton of fill. It's hilly. It's grady. It's going to take a ton of money to get that property ready. In order to get it to this five fields and what it's going to do, we're not going to be able to do that for $2.3 million plus $800,000 in property taxes. I'd like to see the bid on that what it's going to take because we're not going to be able to do it. Um, and also, I don't know if we considered the annual maintenance fee, um, and we calculated that for phase one, but we should have the money for that because I did do a comparison um, with the Appleton fields, and uh, I have some numbers here to share with you. Um, one of the things that was talked about is that the clubs can support this. I do hope that to be true, but the facts don't support that. Um, I looked up the 990 tax 2013 forms and the total expenses for our soccer club, advertising equipment, uniforms. Um, it's about $63,000 annually to run that club. Um, and they were a $3,000 de deficit. They had $60,000 in revenues. And unfortunately, our football club is in worse shape. Their 990 tax um, is said that they had expenses of $36,000, and they only got revenue of $24,000. They were $15,165 short which tells me that we don't have the money in our clubs to be able to sustain a, a field like this. How do I know that? Because I looked up a comparable in um, Shields right here, and I looked. They have more fields. They've been in business about 20 years. They rent their um, facilities from the city of Appleton. Um, their soccer club does. Uh, it's called the Appleton Soccer Club. It's on the website. And uh, it costs them about $492,000 a year in expenses to run those fields. And so if you break that down to five fields and make it comparable, it cost us about $150,000 to run those fields. And I just stated that the soccer club was $3,000 short yet last year, and it only cost them $63,000 to run, which means we'll be short about $90,000. Now, the question is, is the city taxpayers going to have to make up that money? And are we going to tell the kids no? I mean, there's Excuse just me, so many unfunded liabilities at this point Excuse to the me, taxpayers. Melissa? We cannot do this. Sorry. Time is up. I wish we could. Next up is Lorraine Green, followed by Vicki Meyer. Lorraine, can you give us your name and home address, please? Yes, it's Lorraine Green, 2308 North 35th Street. And, and I'm have, here. You'll have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, I'm here to oppose the sale of the Field of Dreams. Um, I've been doing a little, oh, by the way, I want to preface this by saying I also support uh, a new facility from Aurora. I am not against them building here. I'm just against them building on our green space. I've been doing a little contacting with the DNR uh, because I know that the DNR gave us a $92,000 grant to develop the Field of Dreams. It's a something Nelson Fellowship Stewardship Program. So anyway, they have to follow uh, the DNR guidelines. I find it very interesting that after over 17 months of negotiating between the school board and Aurora, that the DNR was not contacted by either one of those groups until Monday, February 16th, which is just a little over a week ago. Um, no one had any concerns that this sale and future projects associated with the sale of the Field of Dreams would conflict, conflict with DNR guidelines until one week ago. We actually contacted them two weeks ago, so because that's when we found out. <laughs> so here we stand today, two weeks passing the original sale date approval by the school board, and no one even consulted with the school board before the original vote date was scheduled. Doesn't this raise a red flag to any of you here? 
for a grant to be approved, there are certain criteria that are set up for post-date approval of the grant from the DNR. Did anyone check to see if these criteria were being followed? Nope. I have, I have it here, and I'm just going to slip it in. It wasn't in my original. It says, the proper, this is the condition. The property acquired or developed with the assistance from this program shall not be converted to uses inconsistent with public outdoor recreation um, without the approval of the DNR. So here they want to convert it to a medical facility. So anyway, that condition's not met. There are wetlands uh, that are designated on the uh, artwork presented to the public, both on parcels of land on T uh, Taylor Drive East and the parcel on West. Does this current wetlands legislation have any bearing on what can and cannot be done on these properties? Has anyone bothered to clear this or check this out with the DNR? Well, according to the man that I talked to, no, it was just finally referred to them this past week, and that was only because we alerted them to it. Um, according to Jim Ritchie, the supervisor of the grant program with the DNR, at least two conditions need to be met before the DNR can approve this Aurora development. First, the wetlands and the waterways needs approval. Second, the contamination of the soil on the east parcel needs to be to meet any contingencies with that. So a medical facility is going to be constructed on land Excuse that has... Me? Yes. I'm sorry, Lorraine, time is up. Oh, my goodness, I didn't even get to, to the water runoff. Somebody ought to check that out. Thank the, you. The, the, next, the water that's coming down from we have the west. Vicky it goes from, let's see, uh, next up we have west Vicky, to east. Excuse me, ma'am, you're done. From south to north. And can we have your name and home address, please? Vicki Meyer, 3107 North 26th Street, Sheboygan. And you will have three minutes. Thank you. Um, and again, nobody is opposed to Aurora building a new, much-needed facility, just not on the field of dreams. There has to be some place else that will be suitable for Aurora to build. And we're all for that, just not on the field of dreams. I was part of a group of people that saved Sheridan Park. Marilyn Montemayor was part of that group. Marilyn Donahue, David Gallinetti, they all fought to save Sheridan Park. And we did. And the police station was built, just someplace else. It appears that money is driving this issue. And it's sad that so many people can be bought off by money. And after the Sheridan Park saving, uh, Park and Forestry Commission was created. And why wasn't this referred to the Park and Forestry Commission? The rezoning affects the city. The city would not destroy a park. And I think this issue is just way too big for the plan commission to, to deal with. I think they should send this to the full council with no recommendation and let the council decide on this. And basically, that's all I have to say. And I'm just hoping that everybody, please, dig deep in your heart and realize that destroying this park is wrong on every level. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Just raise your hand so I get an idea of who's out there. Okay, uh, Mr. Bemis, you want to start out, and uh, next person can take the chair, and if anyone else wants to be on deck, just step up here and, and take the chair next to the podium. Okay, we're going to need your name and address, please. Jonathan Bemis, B-E-M-I-S. And your <clears throat> home address? 3612 Saman Avenue. Okay, and you will have three minutes, sir. We are all here in this room, stakeholders, right, in the community in which we live. I want to talk to the plan commission, to the city officials. Every citizen in here represents one vote. It's the foundation of our system. One person, one vote. Money does not buy extra votes. No matter how much we want to think about budgets and about donations and about soccer parks, money does not buy extra votes. This has been described 
as a win-win-win. And while I will acknowledge, and while you've heard other members of the neighborhood of the city of Sheboygan and the town of Sheboygan, north of Superior and west of Taylor, talk, there needs to be a win for Aurora. If, they're, if, they're, if they as a business and they as a health care provider need more space, well, they need more space. School board has got a budget problem. City needs recreational facilities. Okay, win, win, win. But unfortunately, the way the proposal is, has been proposed, the way the plan has been put together, there's a fourth group that's losing, and that is all of the residents of that corner of town. The city and our elected officials have a responsibility to equally represent all interests. And the residents of that section of our community are going to lose. Please consider the fact that you'll be taking from, Ms. Rush put it very well, we've been told there will be more recreational space. 111 minus 35 is not more, it's less. The idea that uh, the soccer clubs and football clubs will be able to self-sustain those properties when right now the school district is, right, is obviously, as I think has been pointed out by Ms. Bresch, a little bit ludicrous. There's also the DNR. If they haven't been contacted and all this discussion has gone down, I wonder if the DNR can be bought by money. I'm asking the plan commission to please consider rejecting this proposal or I'd like the novel approach of sending it to the full common council and to our elected officials with no recommendation so that it may be decided on behalf of all the citizens, not all the citizens except the residents of the northwest corner of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you. And can we get your name, please? Sure. Name is Corin Manuj. Okay, hold on. Let's spell that. Okay. First name Corin, C-O-R-I-N. Last name Manuj, M-E-N-U-G-E. It's a complicated one. <laughs> and your home address, please. 1535 North 27th Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, and you'll have three minutes. Thank you. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for this opportunity to get up here and speak today. As a young person who has recently graduated from college and is now in a space of deciding where to move next, um, this is kind of a great opportunity for me. Looking at, do I want to stay in Sheboygan? Do I want to move somewhere else? This is definitely a very key consideration for me. Um, I came into this just recently being informed by my cousin, Mary Jo Zagosen, who's also present here today. But I came here today to observe and see what I could gather, and I just want to speak a little bit to my observations. So first off, it's clear from what I've heard today that Aurora does have the right intentions. I've gathered that much from the Aurora staff members that have spoke, um, from the representatives of the corporate entity. But I think it's very important when making large decisions like this to weigh intent versus impact. There is a very clear, correct intent here, but I'm seeing from the citizen complaints that there's a very big gap between what the intent is and what the impact that will be had on the citizens. It is clear also that the residents are concerned. I'm a resident, I am too. But, speaking a little bit to the rest of the citizens, I think using language like destroy and other negative language kind of obfuscates our point. Because then we're speaking from anger rather than reason. So, what I see overall here is that it's clear that dialogue has not happened between the citizens and between, and between Aurora. And now I want to speak a little bit to young people. I've heard young people as a phrase tossed out a lot today, though I haven't seen any young people up here speaking per se. That's not a comment about anyone's age. No offense. Um, but I want to speak a little bit to young people. You know, everyone said this is what young people will want. This is what young people will want. Well, as a young person, I will tell you what I would want. I would want to live in a community where there's actually significant dialogue happening between residents and a corporate entity. And right now when I see something like this, where a dialogue basically gets shut down, where it's one telling, no, I'm right, please believe me, I'm right, and the other saying, no, I'm right, please believe me, I'm right, no dialogue happening between the two, that's not a community I want to live in. So, speaking as a young person, if you want to see a community where young people will move in, you'll make dialogue happen between all of your entities. Thank you. Thank you. And I need your name, please. Yes, Debbie DeMuna, and my address is 1704 North 35th Street. And you'll have three minutes. Okay. Well, I found section 15.903, I'm going to have to take my glasses, point nine oh three, the amendment of official zoning map in um, Sheboygan. 
and I ran across that to do this, they have to consider uh, land use intensities and land use impacts as related to the environ or environ, the environs of subject property. And we have to check that it's not in conflict with the provisions of the city's comprehensive plan, master plan. Um, also, the city council, uh, I mean, there's a lot in here, but we're not following it because the city council shall schedule a reasonable time and place for a public hearing to consider the application with 45 days after receipt of the written recommendation from the plan commission. That's 45 days. And um, it says at least 10 days before said hearing, the city clerk shall mail an identical notice to the applicants to all property owners within 100 feet of the boundaries of the subject property as identified in subsection blah, blah, blah. And to the clerk of any municipality whose boundaries are within 1,000 feet of any portion of the jurisdiction of this title, which that would be the town of, of Sheboygan. Also, it says, um, yeah, they have to, well, yeah, I said they have to include the impacts, and I've got to find my last part. Um, and then if we want to protest it, if they follow all these, because we're not following the time frames or anything, but if we do follow everything, um, the owners, if they, in the event that we protest against it, to the uh, official zoning map fi filed with the city clerk, duly signed and acknowledged either by the owners of 20% only or more of the areas of the land included in such proposed change or by owners of 20% or more of the land immediately adjacent, extending 100 feet therefrom or by the owners of 20% or more of the land directly opposite thereto, extending 100 feet from the street frontage of such opposite line. Then such amendment of the zone official zoning map shall not become effective except by the favorable vote a favorable vote of three-fourths of the members of the Common Council. So, uh, in other words, it doesn't seem like they're, in, they're considering the people who own property there, and, you're, and that has to be considered. And then I also, if I wanted to say, yeah, we have to consider the DNR, too. I talked to the DNR, the same Jim Ritchie, and he said we're doing everything in the opposite manner that the normal uh, channel should be, which should be you should get it okayed by the DNR before proposing selling and rezoning and all that stuff. And um, there are other properties. Why steal a park for uh, commercial? And it would change the, full, the whole area. And then the property taxes. St. Nick's pays a lot more taxes than Memorial pays. And that is one thing I don't understand. I have, their, I have it around here if you want to see. They pay lots Debbie, more. your yes. time is up. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Can we get your name, please? Yes, my name is Scott Schaefer, 2503 Rolling Meadows Drive, Sheboygan. And you'll have three minutes, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Scott Schaefer, president of Sheboygan Youth Football. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today on behalf of Sheboygan Youth Football. Uh, our organization's 28-year-old nonprofit volunteer-based organization works with our local high schools to teach fundamental football geared towards uh, the participants' prospective high schools. We average 250 student participation level. Little history about our program. Uh, it dates back, dates back to 1987. Don Cullith, who was then the head football coach at North High School, uh, started our program. Uh, it was meant to develop fundamental football skills for all 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students at a time when the area middle schools uh, cut out the football programs and other sports as a cost savings measure. Many schools had an advantage as their programs remained or were already run by organizations such as ours. Uh, Don, remains, Don Culth remains an active role on our board of directors today. The opportunity of having a home of our own dedicated to football is incredible. We are truly a sport without a home, and we are one of the few sports, if not the only sport, youth sport in Sheboygan, without a dedicated area to pr practice and compete. We have gratefully and without complaint played on the Bratwurst Days parking lot known as Kiwanis Park. We've shared that space with baseball, softball, private parties, shuttled equipment in our private vehicles, at times dealt with unsafe parking, insufficient broken lighting, uh, all with the constant background noise of skateboards and BMX bikes. We have rented our own space for equipment, purchased our own scoring system, hired referees, rented high school fields, paid to have our lines painted on the fields, rented equipment, 
uh, tents at no cost to the taxpayer. We have given out thousands of dollars in scholarships. We have benefited thousands of Sheboygan area youth with our program. In 2010, we added a fifth grade tackle and a fifth through eighth grade cheerleading program. Getting a commitment through the generosity of the Butson family, the city of Sheboygan, the Sheboygan Area School District, and especially Aurora Healthcare to provide land space opens the ability to apply for some otherwise unreachable grant opportunities with the NFL and other youth organizations to make our home a reality. Although this is without question a difficult situation to try to raise uh, th hundreds of thousands of dollars to reach our goals and dreams for the youth of our great city, we're up for the challenge. The potential to have a place to call home for Sheboygan Youth Football would probably exceed the vi visions of Mr. Cullith and at least take our program to the next level. With the potential to hold year-end tournament play, summer camps, and league play would be a boost to the local economy and re-energize some of the kids that may not be taking advantage of our program. Just a few facts that I researched through various city agencies. The population of our city is currently about 48,725, depending on who you ask. But with the, with the east-west division line of Pennsylvania Excuse Avenue. Excuse me, Scott. I'm sorry, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. And can we get your name, please? Sure. My name is Tammy Robb. I live at 2224 North 34th Street here in Sheboygan. Could I ask if we could have the site map up where it shows the east and the west parcels, please? How do you spell your last name? Is it Rob? Yeah. R A A. While we're working on that, what I'm going to do is pass around a basket. Anybody who'd like to give a donation to any charitable organization would be appreciated. So it's your choice. Up to you. Okay, you can go ahead. Our goal this evening is to really make this project a win-win-win situation for everyone in involved. And how do we do that as a community as a whole? Um, and does everyone have any ideas on how we can do that? Well, we've been working as a team, not only with our community, with, with Aurora, with the school, with the city, and everybody wants to win. With that being said, we've proposed over 13 different sites that Aurora could certainly yeah, build on. We support Aurora in this project if we support everything they want to do with growth of their facilities and physicians and so on and so forth. But there are different site locations that certainly can be collected. Passing around the handout, there are more than three sites on the north side of Sheboygan. Maybe they should consider maybe, uh, uh, Evergreen Park. Plenty of space and opportunity and growth for them. Plus, they would be off the 43 and 40. 42 corridor. The central location has more than six locations, and the south side location has endless opportunity. They talk about wetland, or they talk about, you know, why Aurora, um, what they need. Well, everybody has needs, and it's a matter of negotiating and compromising and working together as a team to make this a win-win situation. Busing is not an issue. I've met with the bus company. They're willing to work with Aurora and everybody involved to make this project successful. Railroad, They've been working with railroads since their inception here in Sheboygan. I don't see a, a challenge with that. The market studies that I have seen and have actually produced for Sheboygan County shows that people want to stay on the south side or the north side. They don't want to travel back and forth. Those publications and studies are posted online, and you can certainly have a copy if you'd like that. In addition, um, some of the stats that Aurora has shared throughout this process in the last two and a half weeks have been inaccurate. I've pointed them out several times in several meetings. Anybody who would like a copy of that, I'd be more than happy to share. If you take a look at the back of this map, and hopefully it got around to everybody, you will see a copy. You'll see the west side and the east side parcel. To make this a win-win situation and to save $2.7 million is to keep the fields where they currently are, and Aurora can build across the street on the east side. There's plenty of acreage and opportunity and growth for them. 
So why can't Aurora consider that? Why can't they sit down and discuss that? I'm not sure why. We've been asking that question for three weeks, and Aurora has not given that answer. They say it's confidential. If we want to make this project successful, nothing's confidential, and it should be open records and open book. In addition, um, if you take the current Purvea Clinic and you times that clinic from an aerial view, times that by nine, there are more than ample growth, uh, growth for them. And that includes the wetlands that are around them. So if you take a look at the back of this map, I have, I have highlighted in yellow a projected wetland um, uh, Excuse me, Tammy, challenges. your time is up. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, I need your name, please. Uh, my name is Mary Jo Zagozin. I live at 2314 North 7th Street. Um, something I haven't brought up in my speaking is that my father was assistant administrator at St. Nicholas Hospital for over 16 years, acting administrator for four. He was in the planning of that actual development. Uh, he was the last person to leave the parcel on the uh, Superior Avenue, and it was... Uh, um, vacated and made into housing. Uh, the plan that is actually there uh, in um, that the sisters have made is a wonderful thing. He also told me that before Aurora moved in, all of the physicians and everyone that was in the community worked together. There was a wonderful family that was here, and all people worked together and had wonderful communication. Since Aurora has moved into the community, that has dissipated and is no longer a factor. Um, his passion is medicine. Uh, he's still a pharmacist at 74. So he is opposed to them building there because uh, we do need medical care on the south side of Sheboygan. We also have uh, the estimate of the taxes that are, that are coming up that it's approximately $200,000 annually that they will spend on that property. It takes $4 million for our streets and $12 million for our police protection. If they move the facility to the south side where they've already purchased land, we would still get taxes from them. We do not need to destroy a green space that is currently across from already a phenomenal medical facility. I am not opposed to having Aurora here. That is not the case. I'm not opposed to the Butson property being placed. What I am opposed to is the communication and the ethics that have gone behind this. I've lived in progressive cities across this nation, a project manager for a multimedia million dollar um, number one acoustic design firm in the world. I've done over 300 projects worldwide, and this is absolutely ridiculous that this is even being considered. Any other progressive city would have said, no, we're not getting rid of the green space. We have plenty of space on the outskirts. Let's build. There's no emergency care from here to Fond du Lac. There's no emergency care from here to Plymouth. There's no, well, I should add that Aurora bought the hospital in Plymouth that had emergency care and closed it did not add 24-hour care there. They only have urgent care. There is no emergency facility from here to Manitowoc or to Port Washington. If we were to move the facility out into the county, and I do understand that money is a factor. The big pile of money is being put on that field of dreams. Please consider the, <laughs> the long-term effects of this on everybody the long-term effects of what it's going to do with our growing city. People don't want to move here because there is no progress. I kind of want to move again because there is no progress. Mary Jo, Thank your you. time is up. I'm sorry. Can we get your name, please? My name is Catherine Cullis. I live at 2214 North 7th Street. Okay, do you want to give us your last name again? What is, how do you Cullis, spell it? K-O-L-L-A-T-H. Okay, thanks. Three minutes, please. And what I, as she finished saying maybe she would want to move, that's what I think we're trying to do here with Aurora. I work at Aurora Healthcare. We're trying to build this community to draw people in and, and bring things into our community. Um, I'm a little nervous, so I'm just going to read what I have here. 
I believe that we live in a great community here in Sheboygan. I believe that our city has a great future. I believe that part of that great future is to improve the land currently labeled the Field of Dreams. Your approval will allow Aurora to purchase the property and move forward with, with the improvements of the recreational properties, as well as the building of a state-of-the-art surgical facility. I, I fill a lot of hats as I'm talking to you today. I'm the mother of four children that have grown up playing sports throughout the recreation department, the YMCA, Diamonds Youth Football, or Youth Baseball, and Sheboygan Youth Football. I'm currently a neighbor to the Aurora Memorial, Memorial Medical Center facility. I speak to now how my home is being affected by having a six-story medical facility in the middle of my residential neighborhood. I am also an Aurora employee as I speak to, for the growth in the new facility. As a mother of children who have played many sports, first I would like to say the Field of Dreams is in poor condition and has been for several years. My parents have been unable to attend various events at this field due to the unstable terrain, and when they have watched their grandchildren, it has been from the car parked on the street to ensure that my stepfather, who walks with the cane, will not fall. We have had gains canceled due to the amount of mud on the field because of the poor drainage system. <coughs> Several visitors from out of town, including my sister-in-law, who grew up here, has commented on the poor conditions of these fields. Your football, youth football is near and dear to my heart, as Scott stated. Not only did my boys, boys grow up playing youth football, but Don Cullith, the founder of Sheboygan Youth Football, is my father-in-law. I know the conditions of the field at the Kiwanis Park that the kids play on. I know the hard work and the many hours hauling equipment and renting tents and painting field lines. I know the need to have a home, a place to have pride in. The soccer program has a home. The baseball softball program has a home. It's time for Sheboygan Youth Football to be given the opportunity to have a home as well. In 2007, I purchased a home on 2214 North 6th Street. I live a block and a half from Memorial Ho the Memorial Hospital. I can truly say that initially I was concerned with what it would be like to live next to the hospital, the noise of the helicopters, the ambulances running, the traffic up and down my street, and the general noise of business. I can tell you that I have been pleasantly surprised. Aurora is a good neighbor. The ambulances do not run their sirens until further away from the facility, and the helicopters, they blend in with the noises of life. As a side note, my family has decided to pray when a flight for life has landed for the family and the individual being transported. Aurora will be a, good, be a good neighbor if given the opportunity to build at the Field of Dreams site. January 2009, I started working at Aurora Memorial Medical Center as a gastroenterologist te technician, and I love my job. My employer is always looking for better ways to take care of our patients as we move forward in the new age of health care. In order to do this effectively, we need more space. Excuse me, Kathleen. I'm sorry your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Has everyone who wished to make some comments to the commission had a chance to speak? Okay, then I'll close the uh, public uh, input session and bring the conversation back to the members of the commission and the council. Uh, does anyone have any, uh, first of all, I'd like to ask a question. Um, you know, we've had these meetings for the better part of two and a half weeks now where we've had input from the neighbors. And I'd like to ask Aurora, you know, if they were able to change or uh, adapt their plan to uh, take care of some of these concerns that were expressed. Um, yeah, I think you've seen kind of our second rendition uh, with what we presented today um, to consider the barriers, um, you know, the access to the to the property. You know, our intent is, because um, we are early in the planning process, is to uh, create an advisory group that would be made up of uh, five people from the neighborhood. Um, you know, our intent with that is we'll be sending a letter out to the to the 200 uh, that we've um, been communicating with to see who's interested. And we definitely want to have diverse uh, opinions with that to, to review our plan, help us make sure that we're considering the needs. And if we can address those, we'll do, we'll do our best to do that. We'd also like that group to help us with construction. There's been concern definitely around the construction period uh, and, the, and the dynamics that may create for the neighbors so that we're able uh, to address those issues timely and make sure that we're planning around that. Thank you very much. Commissioners, any other questions? Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I, I'd like to move to amend the request and recommend approval of the rezoning. Can we put the motion on the floor to adopt uh, the original request first? Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so you want me to... Um, 
move to accept the the rezoning yes is there a second to that second we have a motion in, uh, and a second. So the rezoning request is now on the floor for discussion or amendments. Okay. Um, at this time, I'd like to move to amend the request or recommend approval of the rezoning request subject to the following conditions. Number one, the future land use map of the city of Sheboygan comprehensive plan is amended to a classification consistent with the proposed rezone. Number two, it is also recommended that a resolution be drafted and introduced at the next city council meeting directing pu a public hearing for an amendment to the Sheboygan Comprehensive Land Use Plan and a change in zoning for property located at 3306 Salmon Avenue. And number three, closing of the purchase of the sale of the former Field of Dreams property from the Sheboygan Area School District to Aurora Healthcare or related entity for development of medical office facilities on or before December 31st, 2016. And I think that will address one of the woman's previous um, um, issues that she brought forth at the public hearing. Thank you for that amendment. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have the amendment on the floor for th further discussion. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Thank you for your time, Mayor. Um, I've been a plan commissioner here. I've lived in Sheboygan since 1986. I've been a plan commissioner for 18 years at various times. And many times uh, we've had to address issues that didn't go over well in neighborhoods. Just to give a little background, uh, based on the fact that there was a comment earlier that this issue was too big for us, there is a process. There are things that happen. There are, there are ways to get things done. The way this goes, we need to make a recommendation for or against. No recommendation is, in my opinion, giving up. That's not what we do. Uh, the former Century, the Century, the store that was built over uh, just off of Taylor Drive. I was on the planning commission for that. No neighbors wanted that. I happened to vote against it at the time. Clearly, it has not worked out. That happens. Both the Walmarts, no one wanted those, but they're the, they were there. The new pick and save on the south side, neighbors opposed, talked it out, worked it out. We were able to come up with a compromise. One of the ones that stands out in my memory, the former Lickey's Market. Yakums Hall wanted to build there. These are folks who lived in Sheboygan. The neighbors were vociferous in their proposal to that proposition. They did not want it. And I strictly recall the owner of uh, Lickey's at that time saying, then why didn't you shop here? We'd still be in business if you shopped here. One after another through the years, the car wash over off of Erie Avenue. No one wanted that car wash. And you know who was most opposed to it? The bad elements that were in that neighborhood at the time and who were still there at the time. Not the good neighbors, have nothing against them, but the folks who were moved out were complaining completely to the high heavens, don't tear this down, don't do this. Well, that's because you wanted to continue to be a bad element. We make tough decisions here on the Planning Commission for a reason, and we just have to reiterate, if Aurora or anyone else wanted to build a hospital on that land as it is today, there is one committee who would hear that. That would be the plan commission under a conditional use. It wouldn't go any further. These issues are never too big for us. We just have to make sure that we listen and understand the complexities of the issue, listen to everyone without passion. There is always emotion, and sometimes it gets in people's way to having a good discussion. I was, I was approached in Walmart just on Saturday as a plan commission member by someone yelling at me this far from my face. Okay, I'm used to that because I volunteered to be on this committee. We need to make sure we make decisions without that emotion. That's why I would like to make sure that everyone who considers this understands plan commission members do this not because they're elected. We are not elected officials outside of the alderman and the mayor. The rest of us are volunteers on this committee. Ryan is appointed. We make sure that we listen to every committee member, every person in the community who comes up to us on both sides of the issue. We are not bought and paid for. Those are the kind of words that get people into trouble. We don't want to use those kinds of words. Thank you for your time, Mayor. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else wish to discuss the, the matter any further? Okay, then we're voting on the amendment. Um, all those in favor of the amendment as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Then we're uh, returning to the main motion as amended. One last call for any discussion. 
Seeing none, all those, go ahead, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to echo some of the, the sentiments that uh, Plan Commission Member Mr. Jones um, reiterated. Um, you know, for some of those that spoke, um, the, the process that's going to take place is that we're going to make a recommendation either in favor or against, and it's going to go to the Common Council, and then it's going to lie over. And then the Council, um, I believe in April now, is going to vote on um, the recommendation or on the rezoning. So the full Common Council is going to vote, and regardless of whether we recommend the rezoning or we, did, or we recommend against the rezoning, that common council, that body, can do whatever they want. They can vote whichever way. They do not have to take the recommendation from this body. So by this body making a recommendation, does, it does not you know, you know, cement the, the, the issue and, and it's not a foregone conclusion. That body in April, the council, can make whatever vote they want. Um, I would also like to um, talk about some of the fuzzy math that I heard earlier discussed. Um, people were talking about 100 and whatever acres of green space. There's not 100 and some acres of green space. There is 35 acres right now, and that's the field of dreams. The east property, I would not consider that a green space right now. I wouldn't consider the Blitzen, Blitzen Farm green space. That's a field right now that was being farmed. So. You know, the, the math that you, know, that you are subtracting green space by this project is completely false. What's actually happening is you're gaining 35 or 37 acres of green space. Um, it, so there's, there's no destroying of green space. I would not be uh, considering this proposal at all if there was not a plan to address, you know, additional green space. So that condition has, has been met. There's also a constituency in our uh, community that has been underserved over the years, uh, and Scott spoke about that, and that is the youth football organization. Um, they've been struggling uh, to find a home, and this would provide them with an opportunity uh, to, to make uh, significant improvements in their facilities, and, and I think that's wonderful. And I also think it's wonderful that um, Mr. Gravener has reached out to the neighbors that are in, concerned about this project, and putting together a, an advisory committee. Um, he didn't have to do that. Um, he, he felt the need to do that, and I think that's an, an outstanding proposition to, you know, to, to move forward with these people. Um, I've heard, I've had countless phone calls and emails, both for and against, and I realize you know, that the passion on both sides and you know, I do think that this is a positive move for the city and we'll be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Okay, then we'll vote on the motion as amended. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I want to thank everybody for coming to speak and share their opinions on this issue. Um, I guess uh, one thing we should just uh, say is that the timeline on this, originally we thought that this would come back for a public hearing to the uh, second council meeting in March, and that's now going to be at the first uh, council meeting in April, and that'll take place on Wednesday, April 8th. We have a slightly different uh, schedule that week because of the election, so rather than having a meeting on Monday, it will be on a Wednesday that day. Next is item 2.7, which is RO 242 of 1415, submitting a communication from EHS Specialist Air and Landfill Management Kohler Company, proposing to construct a vertical expansion for continued disposal of hazardous industrial solid waste on the Twin Oaks landfill site. We'll turn it over to Steve. Um, this was a communication we've received from the people. This is a communication that we've received from the village of Kohler with regards to their landfill site there's cer certain permitting processes that they're required to go through through the Department of Natural Resources and one of those is to give the city of Sheboygan notice of what they're proposing to do 
Um, that's just, a, I believe, just a little bit of an increase in the filling of the height of the existing landfill. So there isn't anything taking place in the city. It's a notice that's provided. We've received the document, and staff is simply recommending Check to file the document. First. Go ahead. Just, just a minute on, on this. The, there, there is some concerns from the public works standpoint on stormwater runoff, and I don't know if we can necessarily address it with this, but um, the recommendation would be that if we sent this back to the council, we would have a clause in there that they further discussions with stormwater because some of their leachate that comes from that landfill, they have proposed to send it to our wastewater treatment plant. And I'd ask Dave Beeble to maybe give us a little bit more update on what he knows related to that. Mr. Beeble? Thank Please you. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I had a conversation with, with Kohler Company representatives, and at this point, Everything's going to meet DNR standards. Their application has provisions in there for their stormwater runoff, leachate collection, as well as the contours of the proposed added uh, feature that they're adding. It's basically going to extend the life of their facility another 15 years. That's the maximum it can be extended. And um, it's just basically our notification. So I don't think we should have any problems because it's going to have to meet all the DNR regulations. Okay. I guess I'd entertain a motion to accept and file this. Move to approve as presented. Second. Thank you for that motion. Any final discussion? Go ahead, City Attorney Steve. Uh, Your Honor, just a, a question perhaps of uh, Mr. Beeble or the planning staff. The, the Kohler Company letter is actually asking us to provide them with indication as to whether or not uh, there there are particular local approvals that are applicable that that we need as a city to provide them or provide them a statement that there are no local approvals required so uh, I guess what I'm hearing from Mr. Beeble is that there's no uh, approvals or uh, permits that would be required from the city and out of courtesy if, if that's the case we should probably uh, perhaps amend the motion to uh, to provide that a letter be drafted to the Kohler company expressing that uh, there would not be any local approvals required are the motioners okay with adding that to their motion that a letter to that effect would be sent yes I am. okay yes. all right uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? If your vote's aye, motion passes. Item 2.8 is uh, GO 45 of 1415, rededicating vacant portion of North A Street from a point six feet south of the north line of Wisconsin Avenue to a point 38.5 feet south of the north line of lot seven, block 129 of the original plat. Steve. I'll take this. Steve. Steve. Chad. This, this is uh, North A Street where the Boston Store property jets out into the, the street by the library. So this is basically from the north side of Song Lake Books to the old right-of-way of Wisconsin Avenue. Um, that had been vacated in the past for Boston Stores building to be built into the right-of-way. Um, as part of the planning process, we just opened bids today to uh, reconstruct North A Street in that section to widen the street and bring some angled parking uh, back in that area. So we're uh, requesting that the uh, right-of-way be vacated and, and given back as, or the area being vacated and given back as right away so we can construct the improvements of basically widening the street there and adding additional parking. Thank you for that explanation. Is there any other questions? Go yeah, ahead, Plus, Ryan. Plus, what well, well, that'll do to allow us to have the same, the same road width going from all, all the way down to Bay Street, so that's, that's, that's why we're doing it. Okay, very good. Go ahead, Marilyn. I'm so Marilyn, glad to hear Marilyn, that. Marilyn, Marilyn, grab your... Oh. Did I lose it? Okay, it's there. All right, good. Okay. I'm so glad to hear that. We need A Street back. We should never have done that in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? 
See none. All, Jerry, did you have a yeah. comment? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is adjournment. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Yes. Moved and seconded to adjourn. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.